Hi, this is Vivian, and I am the author of The Silent Christian and its Impact on a Nation. And how is that silence shown when our voices are not heard and our actions are not seen? I want to talk a little bit about the Maui um, fires. You know, I hear a lot of people in my circles talking about, you know, they said it's not going to be water, but fire next time. And so I had to go out there and try to find that scripture. But it, that said that. But first, I want to give to you the first scripture that I found in Genesis 9 and 11, which it says, I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of the flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. And then God had put a rainbow up in the sky just to remind us that he remembers the promise that he would never flood and destroy the earth again. We also know from Hebrews 12 and 29 that God is an all-consuming fire. But 2 Peter 3 and 7 says this, but by the same word, the heavens and the earth that now exist are stored up for fire, being kept until the day of judgment and destruction of the ungodly. So just before that, just a little um, bit about Second Peter in the third chapter, he's talking about how we all forget what God has done and how he has dealt with sin on the earth. And we feel like, you know, with all the craziness that's going on right now with everybody being so angry, um, people being so offended about how the name of the Lord is used in vain. I mean, it has become commonplace, uh, like it's no big deal. We can say whatever we want to say about God, His Word, and His people. And because a lightning bolt doesn't flash out of the sky and strikes us dead, we, we begin to believe that there is no God. But I want you to know there is a God. And just like the people in Noah's day, you know, they continue to sin. You know, they so easily did they forget what happened during the flood and how God, you know, had uh, Noah to build that big ark and close them up. And they were, um, you know, everybody outside of the ark was destroyed. Um, but everybody that was in this ark was saved. And we think that because he doesn't act um, towards our sin immediately, it's almost as if we're getting away with it. And um, that's not the case. Because Second Peter, the third chapter, in the very next verse, the eighth verse says, he, that he wants us to remember that a day with the Lord is equal to a thousand years, and a thousand years is equal to a day. So just because God doesn't just jump down out the sky and whack a mole you on top of your head for your sin does not mean that he does not exist. But the ninth verse is a much beautiful verse to me. It says, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. God is long-suffering. He loves us so much. He doesn't want any of us to perish. He wants all of us to wake up and spell, smell the coffee, for lack of a, pair, of a better word. You know, everybody's talking about the woke generation. Um, I don't even believe that half of the people talking about being woke understand what woke is. But we need to wake up and realize that just because God is a long-suffering God. He's a compassionate and he's a loving God. Does not mean that there are not consequences for our actions. Maui showed us just how destructive fire can be. When we look at those pictures on the screen, there's nothing there but soot and ashes. That's it. The Bible clearly talks about a lake of fire 
In Revelation, the 20th chapter, the 10th verse, it tells us that the devil will be cast into the lake of fire. Revelation, the 21st chapter, in the 8th verse says, the cowardly, the unbelieving, unbelieving, the abominable, the murderers, immoral persons, sorcerers, idolaters, liars, will have their place in the lake of fire. And then in Revelation 20th chapter, in the 15th verse, it says, And those people whose names are not written in the book of life will also be cast into a lake of fire. Now, I don't know if this means that the entire earth, when we go back to um, 2 Peter, the 3rd chapter, in the 6th verse, um, I'm sorry, the 7th verse, if the entire um earth will be set on fire um then that means that the good folks and the bad folks will we have god remove his people from the earth and then burn up everything else i don't know it doesn't specifically say and i can't specifically say but one thing i do know he says no man knows the hour when the son of man shall return that part i do believe and what that is a, is a um, reminder for us that we need to be ready when he comes back. You know, um, there's a lot of talk about Christianity and that um, it's not real. And you need to study God's word for yourself. I'll admit there are a lot of things that I learned in church that I found out were not in the Bible. There are a lot of things that are being taught on TV by some famous preachers and famous pastors, which I can't find any biblical reference for. But I had to find that out for myself. I had to pray. He said, we are to study to show ourselves approved unto God, not unto man, not unto your pastor, not unto your school professor, your uh, seminary professor. No, you need to study to show yourselves approved unto God. And you need to ask him for the wisdom to properly discern his word. And he will give you that wisdom. And he will grant you that wisdom. And grant you that understanding. But you have to ask for it. So, what am I saying to you, silent Christian? We can't be silent anymore. We cannot. You know, we have the fires in Maui. We had the fires up in Canada, which messed with our air quality for quite a, a while. You know, people walking around coughing and sneezing, burning their noses, burning their, their lungs. Um, they talking about Hurricane Hil Hillary, I believe, which is going to dump so much water. You know, the amount of water equivalent to a year's worth of rain in one place in one day. You know, we have to take these signs and these things that are happening on our, on our earth as warnings to get our stuff together to get our life together you know we are all supposed to share the good news of jesus christ the good news of god's word that's our job as christians to let people know about who he is and what he stands for and what the bible really says in the word of god you know not what we think it says or what it may say you know we don't know what this water it was water the last time it'll be fire the next time do we really know what that means do we want to be unprepared when we find out you know he said my people perish for a lack of knowledge hosea 4 and 6 and because they rejected knowledge god rejected them we got to get out there and learn for ourselves stop taking everybody's word for it pick up your bible Read it yourself. I've read the King James Version, the New King James Version, the NIV Version, the English Standard. I mean, it's so many, the Amplified Version. It's so many versions out there. But I always come back to my first one. And I do that for a reason. Because once you start reading, the easier it becomes to understand. God's Word is not some puzzle to be solved. It is a recipe for living life. You know, um, somebody made the acronym Bible is the uh, biblical instructions before leaving earth. Yeah, we can call it that. Um, but all I know is that we need to be ready. 
And to do that, we need to repent and we need to ask God to forgive us of our sins and wash us white as snow because he says he'll throw our sins as far as the east is to the west, praise God. But we have to ask for forgiveness and we have to forgive others because if we don't forgive others, we cannot be forgiven. And that tells us that in Matthew, um, right after the Lord's Prayer. You know, we have to forgive others if we want to be forgiven. And we need to treat people like we want to be treated. All of this other stuff is just that stuff. It's mess. It doesn't mean anything. So, what I want to leave with you today is, if you haven't given your life to Christ, I, I want you or ask you to do so today. And start a journey of learning who He is and what His Word truly says. And stop relying on everybody else to give you the answers to questions that you are truly equipped to find out for yourself. And remember, a silent Christian is when we, it's an oxymoron. They don't go together. And that's when our voices are not heard and our actions are not seen. God is love. And we need to be loved as well. So, I ask you to today make the commitment to be a silent Christian no more and start letting your voice be heard and your actions seen and I'll say another thing and I'm going to cut this off you don't have to know the Bible Genesis to Revelation God will put things and people in front of you that can challenge the things you do know so know what you know and learn what you um, need to learn and study to show yourself approved unto him. I'll till the next time. Have an awesome day and make that commitment to be a solid Christian no more. Don't forget to like, to comment, share, and subscribe. Please have an awesome day. Bye-bye.